We are back on Morning Line. Our guest is uh, District Attorney Glenn Funk. Are you going to come on on a regular basis if we can get you on? Sure. I sure appreciate it. It's, uh, it's interesting just uh, learning about some of the things that you deal with in basically the biggest city in the state. And uh, listen, just a lot of high profile cases. We talked about what's happening with Delkey this morning. I know you're bound by certain things you can't talk about, but we know um, I think February, um, at the end of this month, will be jury selection for the Waffle House shooting case with Travis Rankin. I know there's a gag order in place, but what you can talk about is it's scheduled. It's, it's finally set to go. Do you have any idea, idea how long it's going to last? Um, you know, things, what can you tell us about it? Yeah, well, it's scheduled for jury selection to begin two weeks from today. Uh, we expect, we, we, we've budgeted a week for that. Uh, uh, and uh, because it's a complex case, high profile case, we want to make sure that we've got time to go through and, and pick an impartial jury. We may not take a full week, but uh, we've got those days in case we need them. Uh, and then proof should start the next Monday, the 31st. And, um, you know, I, it could take as long as three weeks, could be done in as short as one week. Uh, a lot depends on kind of how the proof uh, is, is presented and how the defense goes forward. But, um, you know, so, so anywhere from starting with proof on January 31st, should be anywhere from one to three weeks and probably a week and a half. It's not a death penalty case. No. Not a death penalty case. Handling the case, um, Jan Norman, Roger Moore? Roger Moore, uh, Ronald Dowdy, and I'm going to be participating as well. You'll it, participate. It, it is a, the state has filed for life without parole. Uh, very, very serious case. Uh, a number of victims. A lot of proof issues. We want to make sure that the victims' families are fully supported and get the attention that they deserve from our office. And that's why uh, we've got this many lawyers on on a case because you know normally we try a case with two lawyers, but sometimes when there are this many victims involved, then we have more people involved. Incredibly serious case, um, and it's been reported. But evidence in this case, there will be a lot of witnesses. Of course, we know James Shaw. Video. Yep. And um, I know you can't talk about this case per se, but Emanuel Sampson was another case. When you have a case where there is no doubt who the shooter is, none, and it goes to trial, in general, what are the concerns? Well, uh, in the Emanuel Sampson case, which I can talk about, that's the situation where a man came in and did a mass shooting in a church, in the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ. Um, only one person died, but uh, others were injured and everyone was traumatized. We're, you know, we're fortunate that wasn't a, a mass death case. Um, but there were a number of issues and there are folks who say, well, why would I plead guilty if I'm going to be going to prison for the rest of my life and we're not willing to do anything that would cause the public to be less safe by having someone who is that dangerous get back out in a few years. So we want to make sure that we go forward uh, because of the seriousness of the case. Um, and so when you do that and you've got that many witnesses, the last thing you want is for uh, some juror to not be completely satisfied because they wanted to hear more evidence or they wanted to hear from every single person. We've got 12 jurors. Any, any case, we have to have all 12 jurors agree on the guilt of the person that's charged in order to obtain the conviction. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, we have to make sure that we put on all of our proof and do it the best job possible in making sure that that jury is comfortable before we ask them to convict. Perfect answer. So in, in a nutshell, in, in cases like this in general, if the defendant was to come to you and say, you're seeking life in prison without parole, I'll take it. Then, then we'd say sure, right? Because right? that, that's but, the best we're going to that, achieve. That's at, not. At you're, you're sure as heck not going to offer a deal beyond that. Right. And in the absence of that, they have their right to a trial. That's right. It's that simple. Okay, I hope it doesn't go three weeks. We're going to be doing it gavel to gavel. Good. I believe. Good. Um, I, it's I, Judge Fishburne. I, yeah, it is. And, and I, I think your gavel to gavel coverage is really important for the city because we need to know as much as we can about the criminal justice system and we need to know the facts of these individual cases. So uh, the high profile cases that you've covered, I think that is a tremendous public service. We hope it helps educate. Yeah. That's what it's about. Let's take a quick call from Tom. Tom, good morning. Hi, Tom. Hey, good morning, Nick. How are you doing? Good. What's on your mind, sir? 
Well, I'd like to ask the DA there a couple of questions. I want to know something. If a man threatens to shoot you in the face, uh, where does that law stand at? Is that in the Homeland Security Act or what? Well, uh, okay. right. that, the, the Tennessee legislature has made it a crime to commit an aggravated assault. An aggravated assault is either causing serious bodily injury or threatening serious bodily injury with a deadly weapon that puts you in fear of that actual serious bodily injury. And it has to be an imminent threat. It can't be, hey, you know what, I don't like you, mm -hmm. Nick. I've had enough of your questions. I'm going to kill you at some point later on. Right? Well, that's not necessarily an aggravated assault. If I have a gun and I put it on the table and I say, I've had absolutely enough of you, it, mm -hmm. it, you're not even going to make the next commercial break. Well, well, how about pointing a gun at someone in a road rage yeah. incident in the, the road? Road rage incident. I was up in, in, in Madison talking to the Madison precinct commander and, and his lieutenants. There had been some folks in a road rage incident where somebody pulled out a gun and tried to shoot the tires mm. out of the other person on Old Hickory Boulevard. Unbelievable. Yeah. Right. Like, what could go wrong there? I mean, this is not television, right? I mean, that bullet could have carried up. Luckily, nobody got injured, but that would be an ag assault. Attempted that's, murder. That's an aggravated assault. That okay. might even be an attempted murder, right? And so, um, and, and, and with reckless endangerment for everybody else that was on Old Hickory Boulevard at the time. Um, so, uh, but what the caller just just asked was, yeah, that's an offense that's pursuant to a Tennessee statute, and depending on whether or not that was just somebody making a threat, may or may not be a crime, depending on how serious the threat was, how imminent the injury could have been. Uh, plus, if it's a domestic violence situation, right, then it can be uh, treated in a slightly different manner, uh, depending on the history and depending on the other facts and circumstances. We just have two minutes left. We, we'll have to talk about this more when you come on again. But sure. in, in regard to, I know you've worked very closely with Sheriff Hall on mental health yes. and addressing some of these issues where you have individuals that are suffering from real mental distress committing crimes, maybe a way to prevent it before it happens. Right. So we've got two different issues that the sheriff and I have been working on. One is the people that have mental health issues, right? The people that are suffering from some type of psychotic episode who need treatment for that mental health issue. We've got a behavioral care center for folks that are really kind of the, he describes it as on a scale of one to 10, the behavioral care center is not for the people that are eight, nine, 10, the folks that are uh, in danger of going in and shooting up a, a mm -hmm. McDonald's or you know a post office or something. Um, and it's not really for the ones and the twos that have very manageable issues. It's really for the two, three, fours, maybe even the fives. Yeah. And we can divert cases into uh, the behavioral care center have the case get dismissed after they've gotten uh, real quality treatment and then when they get out they're not released to the streets they're released to a, a, an actual person uh, the social worker works with them to find housing and then follow-up care from the mental health co-op you know that's mental health but there's other issues and then we also have you know Melissa Blackburn who has a mental health court mm -hmm. and then sometimes you just have to actually go forward with a prosecution on folks but separate from mental health issues right you've got cognitive issues. What do you understand? Those are the incompetent to stand trial because they don't understand what 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 the court system is. Maybe is, they that, is that ignorance or is that incompetence? What is it? Well, just ignorance isn't enough. Okay. Right? But let's say you've got a, a developmental delay. Let's say okay. you had a wreck and you had a brain injury. Let's say uh, you just have had a psychosis that has made you incompetent. Well, a lot of those folks are able to be made competent through either medication or counseling mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. or some type of education some of those folks uh, uh, are incompetent never to become competent but the problem is we've got about 230 people okay. on the streets of Nashville who keep getting rearrested but then cannot be prosecuted because they're incompetent we had a situation last April. Interesting. And we had a situation last April where somebody who had been arrested over and over and over again attacked a nurse in the mm -hmm. St. Thomas West parking I remember, garage, right. uh, and and could not be prosecuted because he was incompetent. Well, the problem is that if uh, traditionally the state has paid for the Middle Tennessee Mental Health Institute to do a 30-day uh, program where they evaluate the person and then give them treatment to help them become competent, right? Yeah. And, and about 15 years ago, the state said, we're not paying for it if the misdemeanor, if for a misdemeanor, it's uh, only okay, for, felonies. for felonies. We only have about 20 seconds. Well, 
Uh, yeah. Metro Nashville decided all we were going to do was just have them evaluated, but not try to help them, which has left this gap. But I've been working with Judge Blackburn, with Sheriff Hall, with the public defender, with the mental health co-op, and now with the mayor's office. And we hope we're going to be able to make some serious Good. progress to actually have a facility that can help even with the misdemeanants instead of just having them essentially have a get out of jail free, free card. We'll talk more about that next time you come on. Okay. Fist bump. Yeah. Good, it's to, good see to see you this see morning. You, General. Thanks. Take care of yourself. We'll talk All to right. you again soon. Sure. I'll be back with a programming note right after this. Stay with us. Yeah. Thank that, you. That was one of them.